bitches. So I know that I tend to go on and on about how I work with my deities, but as we all know, not all witches do this. Um, so a lot of witches, especially those who are like psychic intuitive, tend to work with the spirits of their ancestors. Now, full disclosure, this video is going to be a little bit more like woo woo, kind of like on the more like personal experience side. Um, but I do want to introduce this topic to witches who may not have heard about, about it before. So I want to talk about it. But for thousands of years, many different cultures acknowledge and actively work with spirits of those who have crossed over, right? So uh, I personally find this practice kind of done a lot more um, in traditions that originate in like Africa, the Caribbean, not so much like European, um, but like indigenous cultures and stuff like that. They tend to um, have a deeper tie to spirit work. I, I could be wrong in that. That's just my personal experience in terms of what I've seen through my research. Um, whereas kind of like the European traditions tend to focus more on like deity work. So like there are specific gods. I'm not saying that neither, like they there aren't crossovers obviously, but I, this is like where I kind of see, I find that with those other like more indigenous uh, religions, those that originated in Africa, those that originated um, or are in the Caribbean currently, um, are more so heavier on the spirit work side. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Um, again, that is not uh, absolutely not to say that you have to practice a specific tradition to do ancestor work or vice versa, right? So um, ancestor work is calling on your predecessors to help with something magical. Um, I see this most frequently used in conjunction with tarot readings or psychic mediumship, and ancestors are also commonly referred to as guides. Um, Okay, so as a reminder, I am Puerto Rican on my father's side, in case you're new here, hello. Um, and we have some people in my family who were kind of like, like on the DL were Santeras, um, people who practice Santarea. And um, I remember like my abuela, uh, like who was a very, very devout Catholic, right? Um, lighting a candle and asking her mother who was deceased um, to help her find something that she lost. And that in essence is witchcraft, um, but also like apparently a really common thing that they did in their household. So like, that's what I mean when um, I say that like I've experienced or like from my research I've done slash experienced, I guess I, yeah. Um, like that's kind of like where I'm getting like ancestor work is coming from other cultures besides European ones. Ancestor work really intrigues me. Um, I have done a lot of, I have a lot of generational trauma on both sides of my family. Um, I did like the ancestry.com DNA like swab thing. And I found that I had primarily like, like the top one is like Ashkenazi Jew, hello. Um, and then below that it's like Spain and Portugal. And then below that it's like indigenous, like Puerto Rican. These people that I am descended from, their energy is like around me constantly. It's part of me, it's part of my DNA. So it's part of me as a person. So their trauma and their, you know, their lives have been theoretically like passed down through me through DNA, which is why I am here and like I look like this. Well, you can work with specific spirits that, you know, of family members, if someone's coming to you, you're like, oh, that's grandma or oh, that's my great aunt. Alternatively, some witches to actually work with the collective energy of like all of those who've crossed over and they kind of tap into that collective unconscious to perform, to perform magical workings. Um, again, I see this a lot in like psychic mediumship and there's also something to do with like the Akashic records. So um, if that's something you're interested in, definitely do more research. I can do kind of a video on it if you guys want, but it's not my area of expertise. Anyways. Um, here are some ways that you can start doing ancestor work. Number one is to create a space for them like on your altar or in your house. This is a really popular thing for witches to do around Samhain, which is in Hall like around Halloween um, or on Halloween, I should say, or Halloween is on Samhain. It doesn't really matter. Um, but anyways, Beltane is also coming up, which is May 1st. And the veil is really thin then too. So you can do this twice a year if you want, if you want to make a whole like ritual out of it um, or do a tarot reading or anything like that. The veil is going to be thin on May 1st, so just keep that in mind. So having a specific space set up for them, uh, like your ancestors, like all the time is a great way to get started. If you have any pictures, maybe hang them up in a specific place um, and start acknowledging them, talking to them, you know, kind of doing that. If you're interested in starting a working relationship but want to confirm that they're present with you, um, like like present, not like present, um, <laughs> I, I would ask for a sign or a dream from them. Um, I have like a quick story, quick side note, quick anecdote. Um, when I was 15 years old, I was just about to take like my driver's test or like my permit test. 
and I was like stressed out. I, I was super stressed out and I had this like dream that like I still remember today, this was almost 10 years ago, but basically I was up in my grandparents like log cabin that they have and which is not like gross and dirty, it's like really nice inside. And I was sitting at their like kitchen table and I, I look up and there's this like man who I've never seen before, but like it wasn't a threatening thing. Um, and he looked like familiar-ish, like in, in my brain he did. And I, he like walked down the stairs, he came over and, and we basically, we had a conversation in my dream. Like he sat across from the table for me. He basically was just like, you know, everything's gonna be okay. You're gonna do great. Like you're gonna do X, Y, and Z. And that, you know, the whole conversation, I remember every part of it. I'm not gonna share it here because it's personal. But basically he introduced himself to me. He was, he looked like a surfer. Like he had this long curly kind of like red hair. He had like an open shirt, like shorts on, like whatever, just a total California dude. He was like, hey, you don't know me, I'm your Uncle Bob. We've never met, but like, listen, I can hear you and like, I'm gonna tell you X, Y, and Z, like, whatever. So I remember like waking up and like my, like I was crying, just sobbing. And like, I wasn't sad in the dream, but I think I was just like emotionally overwhelmed and I woke up with like tears on my face. I think you guys know what I'm talking about. I'm sure it's happened to everybody at some point. So I woke up like that and I ran downstairs and I went to go talk to my mom and I was like really nervous about it, but I was like, hey, like, I explained the dream. I was like, look, this guy said he was like my Uncle Bob. Do A, do I have an Uncle Bob? What am I, what, are, what is this? Um, like, is this just like BS basically? Or is this a real thing? And she was like, oh, that's really spooky. You do have an Uncle Bob, but he died before you were born. They're from California. Like my, my grandfather's family is from California, my mom's dad. Um, and he was like, they grew up in LA. So he was a surfer, like he would go down to the beach all the time. So that was very much his energy. And I was like, okay, so that's weird. Do we have any pictures? And my mom being the scientist that she was said, yes, but I'm gonna let you pick him out. So she opened up this whole like photo album and she goes, just flip through it until you see him. And sure enough, I'm flipping through, flipping through nothing, 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 nothing. And then I see him. He looked exactly the same, had the same freaking outfit on like open shirt, cargo short kind of thing. And I pointed to him, I was like, that's the guy I saw. And she goes, yep, that's your Uncle Bob. And that's super weird. And then she just shut the book and we never talked about it again. But anyways, um, I had that dream. That makes me like, that for me, like just confirms things for me. So that's why when people are like, are you, do you believe in ghosts? I'm like, yes, I do. I believe that our ancestors talked to us. Um, so uh, that was like a good experience for me. So moving right along after that little anecdote, number three is to um, just like talk about them and keep their memory alive. Kind of like the story that I'm talking to you guys about. Um, I think this is a really great way to show your gratitude towards them, especially if you are working with them and this can be used in tandem with offerings. So if you're familiar with the ancestor that you're working with, um, you can leave them a little bit of food, like whatever their favorite snack was, like a bottle of perfume that they liked, something like that, something that they would have liked in life. Um, and I think that like, I feel that makes their presence a little bit more tangible, I guess. Um, and I know that they would probably find it touching. So that's just talking about them, remembering them, working with them. It's just a great way to honor them, right? Um, and then number four is to work with them via tarot. So you can't, I, I mean, I'm not a psychic medium by any means. I can't just like talk to ghosts or like see dead people. Um, so like, that's just not my gift, right? But I am pretty like spookily accurate with my tarot readings, like to be honest with you. Um, so a great way to communicate with your loved ones is to perform a tarot reading. You can ask them specific questions, ask for their guidance. You can like shuffle and draw cards, um, like draw the card for your answer. And then it's kind of like having a conversation with them and they may be able to impart some wisdom or advice if you're asking them questions or for guidance. So that's why another reason that ancestors or spirits are often called guides. Um, I, I invite you all to learn as much as you can about your family. Um, talk to your grandparents or your parents if you can. Um, as much as you can about your family, maybe start, you know, if you have a tie to somebody, just reach out to them. That's always like my my advice is just like reach out and see what, see what sticks. So um, anyways, I will see you guys later and I hope you have a good rest of your day.